Thank you. Welcome back. If you remember last week, we were working on the um, misfire on the Integra. Did we get it fixed? I don't know. We were messing with the injectors and ended up having to put the new old ones back in after we rebuilt it. Did it fix the issue? Ended up putting the old fuel pressure regular back on. Did it fix it? Put the new fuel pressure regulator back on and did it fix it? No, I'm actually gonna tell you. Yeah, it did fix it actually. So it fixed the problem pretty well. And we're just gonna do a few other little things to the car to just get it running to that better tip top position that I want it to be in. So stay tuned. about that I forgot to film and didn't film all the fun stuff that we were doing with the engine so um sea foam doing a whole lot of sea foam so poured the sea foam into the gas tank got the dog over there reveal protecting us you watching the streets watching the world now you can't get sea foam so we did the sea foam into the gas tank full tank of gas we also did the sea foam for the top engine cleaner. Made all that smoke. I should have filmed it. Forgot to film it. Just that little button right there. I forgot to hit start. So made all the big old smoke. Had all the neighbors out wondering if we were on fire or not. Um, so have you ever done the sea foam or haven't done the sea foam? It's pretty simple. So on the Integra, all I did, I used the PCV, PCV valve hose, um, put it in there. I didn't want to do it at the throttle body because of the mass sensor. You don't want to disrupt that. So you don't want to go directly into that and I don't want to spray it. So all I did is I ran the long red hose all the way through there, had it sticking out this end, put the sea foam in, had the car running, held it like 2000 RPMs, let it smoke, let it bellow out into the world and do all that stuff. Once you empty the can, let it sit for about five to 10 minutes. After that, take it for a spirited drive for about five to 10 minutes and everything should be cleared out. And I will say it runs better. I, it, it's a smoother acceleration. It's just all that stuff. The reason why I think I experienced such a drastic difference into it is fuel pressure regulator. So the new fuel pressure regulator right here, the old one. So if you pull the hose off, the vacuum hose that goes to your intake manifold, if your diaphragm is leaking, you will smell fuel in here, which I did, smelled a lot of fuel. Um, yeah, I, I was just wondering like how bad was it in there? So I took the bore scope, stuck it in through the, the throttle body to check in there. She was dirty. She was dirty. It smelled like so much fuel that was in there. I mean, I just took a little wipe, sniffed. I, well, that was nasty. I mean, took a little wipe, smelled it. It was just pure gasoline smell in there. Uh, so that diaphragm has been going for a while because that thing was just caked and just gunk. But it, it should be clean now. It should, may, I'll probably do this again and probably, it's recommended to do it one time a year. I'll probably do it in about five more months because that thing was bad and then just make it a yearly regular basis onto it. But I did put it in the gas tank just to make sure everything with the fuel system is cleared up and all that. And because of these, the Integras are, they're not a direct port injection. They're direct or they are direct port. They're located right above your valves. So the fuel's actually cleaning the valves off every time. Now, if it was a um, direct injection, your spark and fuel would be right there at the pistons under the, so all that stuff. So I'm not too worried about the valves and the carbon buildup because it's being cleaned every time with fuel and put the fuel added, blah, blah, blah. I'm just boring you guys, aren't I? What am I gonna do next? Well, I recommend that anytime that you do sea foam or any kind of cleaning like that, change your plugs. So that's what we're gonna do today, is I'm gonna change out the plugs. The plugs haven't been in there but like a year. I'm gonna go ahead and change it. It's an inexpensive thing. 
go ahead and change them out, get it good. I just don't know, because the sea foam, it does get into all that, and I'm not wanting to risk it, so I might as well just do it. And I know that they're probably gunked. They're probably black, because leaking fuel, I'm pretty sure that I was running rich. I was smelling it, so we're going to check those <laughs> and see which one's black, which one's you know char which one's bronze which one's glaze we're going to check them out see the condition of the uh plugs that'll tell us a lot about the engine might check it out with the bore scope just go in there but um let me pull these plug wires off and pull these plugs out and show you guys what we're working with Plugs are out. I mean, they, I don't know, they're just a little, a little burnty looking, but I mean, I don't know, not too bad. So I got the bore scope in there. I don't know if you can see it, but everything looks good. I don't see an issue with any of them. Let's get it down in there. Like, everything looks good i don't see anything out of place so i don't see any kind of scoring on the the cylinder walls i don't see any gouges in the pistons so we're good i mean i never had issues with it i never suspected anything with it i've done a compression check everything was like 187 across the board so i mean we're good with compression just it's just fun to look in there and see what we got so um I'm swapping out the E3 plugs for just a set of the NGK Sparkplugs V Power. So going with the aftermarket to what the factory recommends on to that. So should help out a little bit better. Um, plus also new spark plugs always a good thing, especially after C foam. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check the last cylinder, make sure everything's good onto that. Uh, put the new plugs in. Put the wires back on, start the car up, and listen to that beautiful, beautiful raspy four-cylinder sound. Yeah, whatever. But, uh, yeah, so that's looking good. Let me finish up here. Uh, put the plugs in, plug wire, start it up. Get back with you, so stick around. All right, so plugs are in. Check your gap size, always verify your gap size. I don't know if everybody else does it, but I use a little bit of a, a anti-seize on my plugs just so they're a little easier getting out for me the next time or God forbid I ever sell this car and the next person gets it. But anti let me know if you guys use anti-seize down in the comment section below. I mean, I've heard people do both. Some people say you don't need it. Some people say you need it. I don't know. What do you guys do? What do you guys like? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's put it down here in the mass assortment of chemicals. Get everything tightened up onto the plugs. Plug wires back on. Start the car. Fingers, cr fingers crossed. This should always be... The bottom of my hood is dirty. I mean, my engine bay is dirty itself, but I don't know. Just don't want to... Because if I get into cleaning it, I want to rip everything out and just clean everything. And I don't want to get into that. So it's just going to remain dirty until we do the rebuild. So yeah, let's get this all done, buttoned up, and started. You have the dog over here. Just crying about something. What are you crying about? 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 Ah, uh, wait, you. So tell me. Tell me. Hey. 
Rufio, what's wrong with the car? What's wrong with it? Tell me. Tell me. Oh, because it's not yours? It's not yours? Yeah. All right, so we got the plugs in. We got them gapped. We got anti-seize on to them. Torqued them down. A lot of people don't torque spark plugs. A lot of people don't torque a lot of things down, but I mean, I figure it, it's in the manual. It's recommended by the manufacturer. It might as well torque it down to what they have. Cause you can easily over torque something. Cause they're only like 13 foot pounds of torque. You can easily over torque that and just like strip them out, whatever. I mean, just, just torque them, just torque them. Just torque, torque, torque. I don't know what that was, but just torque your bulls, please. I mean, that's all, that's all I'm gonna say. So let's put the plugs on, start the car. Hey, Rubio, you excited? The car? car might be running better he doesn't care he doesn't care all right get in the car and drive it away. What are you trying to do? Yeah. You trying to get in there? Uh oh. Yeah. I guess he, he just he wants it. He wants he wants the car. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Uh, so we're gonna give it a minute and let it warm up. Make sure everything's good on to it. And the better thing is, yay, we finally figured out well not figured out but finally finished the fold up fold start onto it. Uh, there's many other things that you can check. I'll go over that in a minute once the engine's done going we'll up and check so I don't have to speak over the engine. We'll go over that. Um, show you what mechanical part next we're gonna replace on the engine. We're not digging into it. Engine's running good, compression's good, we already went over that, blah blah blah. So we'll go over that then the next thing and I'm moving my hand a lot. So you're lucky that this is in like 3D, but uh, yeah, hold up. You hear it? You hear it? It's sounding good. It's sounding amazing. It's redlining, or not redlining, it's idling properly. Um, as you can see, like it's just, it's, I think it's fixed. I think we got it fixed. Dog's down there too. I'm about to step on it. Let's shut it off. All right. There it is. So, like I like I thought in previous, it was the fuel issue. Got the fuel issue fixed. Everything's good. Um, yeah. So my other inclination that it would be would be the um, IAC V valve back here, which controls your cold starts. Um, so it kind of lets in more air. Less. I don't know exactly how it works, but it affects cold start so if you live somewhere where it gets cold that might be your issue if you live somewhere where it really doesn't get cold you'll never have an issue with that thing and for some reason we've been getting cold here in texas we've been waking up to like 20 degrees sometimes even like 10 degrees and last year we had our big old storm so i went ahead and bought a new one waiting on that to come in to replace it it's not gonna hurt it because like i said factory parts 20 year old car so it's not gonna hurt to replace it so i do have one of those it might help out with my cold starts in the morning during these awkward texas morning winters i don't know what it is but we're done with that so we can get rid of the whole oh i'm having to do just the basic maintenance on the car and get back to the fun stuff Talking about welding and cutting and carbon fibers and just everything. So eventually I need to get the caps that go on here. I need to cut this out because you can see I got dents right here. That's where the upper control arm is hitting up here, preventing this from going just a little bit lower. 
I don't like that. I need just, I just need that. I need that inch. So we're going to gain it from here. I think about three quarters of an inch, actually. I need that. So I do need to eventually just, it's going to cut out right here. There's a, a cap. I'm actually going to make my own just out of probably some, I don't know, 16 gauge sheet metal. Weld it on there just to raise this up. I need to determine how high I can go though with the hood closed and all that. Hey, are you excited? Are you happy? Car's running good. Whatever. So yeah, that. Um, still got all the arrow parts and the wide body that we're going to be working on. Um, I want to remove the trim here. Get rid of that side molding. Um, yeah. Lot to do. Lot to do. <laughs> Lot to do. So, but that's out of the way. I hate doing the boring mechanical work but it's out of the way runs good yeah onto the fun stuff hope you guys are along for the ride for the journey for the experience for the laughs for the giggles for the chuckles and all that stuff just remember that there's always a bigger picture happiness always looks small in your hands until you let it go um it's hard to see the bigger picture when you're standing in the frame step back and see what you're doing see that there's a bigger purpose to what you do and, and, and you'll understand it and it'll give you that motivation and the drive to go even further with what you want to do the dog even agrees so just step back look at it because you'll never see the whole picture when you're just standing in the frame so that's all i got for you guys today get out there and build something do something that you love get out there and, and learn something educate yourself continue growing continue being great you guys are amazing. You're all beautiful out there. You look strong. And I'm proud of each and every one of you. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I appreciate you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Leave a comment. Share this thing. Let's get it going. But thank you for watching. Remember, stay gold. Stay humble. Peace.